But who are ye? Now, I know Jesus and Paul had given the devil such a hard time. The devil even said, you know what? Paul is known in hell. We know Paul. We know all about him. We ain't messing with him. Now, he said, but who are you? We don't know you. You don't have no pity. We don't know nothing. And you're going to have the nerve to tell us to come out. He said, who are you? And listen to what the Bible said. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. The devil whooped up on them so they ran. The devil, that was like the Tasmanian devil. He whooped the clothes off of them. They weren't even afraid for people to see her. They wanted to get out of that house so bad they ran out naked and they ran. Listen to what I'm saying. They ran out wounded, meaning that that, not that that spirit did that, but that spirit that was in that man got was in that man and was so strong, he, he clawed him, he scratched him, he beat him, seven men against one. And they ran out of the house, the Bible said, naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Let me, let, me, let me just go just a little bit further. I'm going to touch on this. Verse 19. And many of them which use curious arts. That's that woman with the, all you voodoos and root worker folks, all you horoscope folks, folks talking about I'm, I'm a Pisces, I'm a Libra and all that. No, I was born under the cross. I'm saved. I'm not no Libra. I'm not no Capricorn. People say, well, you can't marry her because you are not compatible. No, we ain't dealing with no Zodiac. Let's get this thing straight. He said, and many of them which had used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it about 50,000 pieces of silver, about $1 million worth of books. They burned them. Why? Because they were convinced. What did I say? Because of this coronavirus, God is going to shake up stuff. Because of this virus, God's going to shake some people to the core because of this virus. There's some of you out there been playing church. You're going to get your act together because there are some people that's close to you. That's going to go. This thing is not over yet. Remember what I said? The concrete was not dry. It wasn't cured yet. They were only doing the ramp, the apron. They hadn't done the, uh, the sidewalk or the driveway. It wasn't done yet. You could still see the rebar. So what are you saying, Apostle? I'm saying to you that it's going to be some more people that's going to die. This thing is going to get worse before it gets better. But when God say the spanking is up, he's going to send his deliverance. It's not going to be because of no man's vaccine. It's going to be because thus Say it, the Lord, when you go to the doctor and the doctor do surgery on you and they do that surgery and they stitch you up, listen to what I'm saying. You don't heal because they stitch you up. You heal because your body is designed to heal itself. And when God get ready for this thing to subside, when he get ready, he says over and enough is enough. What's going to happen is men's bodies are going to, the antibodies in their bodies are going to get to the point they're going to build up a resistance to this virus. And when they build up a, resist, a resistance to this virus, then the virus will no longer be able to attack men's bodies. That's stuff that we live in every day. But because of our immune system, because of the strength of our body, and because of God, because God said, if you keep my commandments and my statutes, I'll let none of these diseases come upon you, which I which I brought upon the Egyptians. Somebody said, well, how do you mean God did this? Let me tell you something. Just because something happened, God had to let it happen. If this uh, COVID-19, if God didn't intend for it to happen, it never would have happened. Don't ever think God is is somewhere asleep. Don't ever think that God doesn't have this under control. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. God loved you so that he gave his son and his son gave his life that you might have a right to the tree of life. You can be delivered. You can be set free right where you are. You don't have to be around a whole bunch of folk. No, no, no. You don't have to be at the church, at the altar. My grandfather got filled with the Holy Ghost walking down the railroad track. Right where you're sitting right now, you can go to the throne of grace. I'm talking about God's a junk man. 
He said, Fred, that goes down the alley, picking up the old barbecue pits with the bottom burner, the old washer, the freezer, the refrigerator. He gets the barbecue pits and all kind of old bicycles and just junk. He, he's a junk man. And what God does, God takes junk and he refurbishes. He makes something out of it. There's many of you out there. The devil told you you'd never be nothing. You'd never have nothing. You'd never amount to anything. But look what God made out of you. And if you would just yield yourself to an almighty God, if you let God know, yes, I love you. I'm sorry. If you confess your fault, he's just, if you confess your sins, he's just and faithful to forgive you of your sin. I'm not talking about dry, dried out crocodile tears. I'm talking about godly sorrow, wicked repentance. When you are broken, when you realize that God gave his son and his son gave his life, Jesus not only wants you to be blessed here on this earth, he, when he comes back, yes, he's coming. I know there's many who say, well, you know, they've been saying that it was ever since I was little. But God is not slack concerning his promise, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. That's why God's mercy, God's grace, God's mercy, God's grace is holding back him and when 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 the when he returned he's not coming back as a lamb wounded no he's coming back as the lion of the tribe of judah so when you when you really get broken and you realize the price that was paid for your freedom right where you are you can tell god lord forgive me forgive me of all of my sin save me right now fill me with the holy ghost and god will deliver you as your son. The blood of Jesus will be applied to your life and every sin that you have committed will be forgiven. And this is the thing you have to understand. When God forgives you, you have to forgive yourself. Many people, God forgives them, but they can't break through that fact. I've done too much. I've done too much. Listen, if God can save me, he can save anybody. If God can deliver me, he can deliver anybody. You are not, you, the hand of the Lord is not too short that he cannot save me. His ears heavy that he cannot hear, but it's your iniquities that have separated between you and your God. Right there where you are, you can confess your fault right there, and the Lord will forgive you. The blood of Jesus will be applied to your life. You can ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost, ah, my. and God will fill you right there with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit give up. If you are sincere, he can fill you right now while I'm speaking, while Peter yet spake these words. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard the word. God will fill you. Don't make it difficult. Don't try to try to plead your case. Don't be no attorney. Just say, God, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. If you can use any of this that's left, please. Some people say, well, I, I'm, I'm going I'm to live like I'm going to live. And on my deathbed, I'm going to uh, ask the Lord to forgive. That's a dangerous chance because he may not hear you. You may not get that chance. But the only thing I'm thinking about, when a person lives like a dog for their whole life, and then they decide they want to get saved. When you stand before God and God said, well done, that good and faithful servant. What did you do that was well done and good? And you was at the club, you were smoking dope, selling drugs, prostitution and all this kind of stuff. Well done, that good and faithful servant. No, no, it don't work like that. So, so your, your works are going to go before you. So I'm saying to my listeners out there, I'm getting ready to wrap it up. I'm getting ready to close for the night. I'm saying to you again, for those of you that would like to partner with this ministry, you can do it via PayPal. For that uh, information, you can give us a call at 214-914-6611, 214-914-6611. We'll be glad to give you all that information where you can contribute to PayPal, Giblify. If you have the app on Giblify, all you have to do is go to uh, UHDT Church and our P.O. Box 850346, Mesquite, Texas, 75185. Or you can go that old-fashioned way, United States Post Office. We're, you know, God, God's still a loving God. And if you... Write a check. Just put this, make it payable to UHDT. If you get a money order, make it payable to UHDT. All right? And, and when you make it payable to UHDT, that mailing address is UHDT Church, P.O. Box 850 346, Mesquite, Texas, and that's 75185. Again, I've enjoyed being with you this evening. People are operating without the power. You never make it. In order to defeat, to defeat something, you've got to have more power than it has. When your car is moving and you apply your brakes, your brakes has, it has to have, the brakes on your car has to have more resistance than the force that your car is traveling with. Therefore, when you apply your brakes, the brakes on your car are able to bring 
your car to a halt. It's able to stop it. God loves you. Apostle Rogers loves you. You know, this is my life. Sometimes people say, well, Apostle, how do you do it? How do you do it? When I was when I was little, I used to tell my mother, I said, I admired Chet Huntley and David Brinkman. I used to tell my mother I was going to say, good night for NBC News. That never happened. I don't work for NBC, CBS, CNN. I work for JSUS. We broadcast live out of heaven. Somebody said, well, how do you remember all of that? You don't know. It's just when the fax machine come on, that's my gift. Gifts and callings are, are without repentance. For all my listeners out there, every one of you that's listening to me, every person that's born, God put purpose in your life. And that purpose is to do his will. Now, whether you get saved or not, that's up to you. But gifts and callings are, with, are without repentance. When God gave you that boy, he didn't give you that voice to rap and sing all kind of club song, this and that, and the R.I.P. and all that. He gave you that to do it for his glory and his honor. God gave me this. He gave me the ability to speak. When the fax machine come on, I let it out. When the fax machine cut off, I let it go. It's been a blast. I've enjoyed being with you this morning. I mean, this evening, God is a miracle-working God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And before we close, I want to have a word of prayer for those of you that are sick in your body. There's no distance in prayer. I believe God. God healed my body so many times. It's unbelievable. I'm not one of those that's operating without the power. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. He didn't say the preacher. He said them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. They're going to lay hands on the sick. That's what we do. So right now, those of you in my listening audience, if you have a pain and my knees are hurting, I pray for people so much. You know, we're going on the radio, pray for people, you know, screaming and hollering. We're going to tell them you don't holler. I can walk. I can walk. This is happening. I'm not hurting anymore. For my listeners right now, if you're sick in your body, you have a misery right now, and if it's not embarrassing, if you're not in a position where you can't, just put your hand on it right now. We're going to go to the throne of grace, and we're going to believe God that God's going to give you a miracle, that he's going to move it, not tomorrow, not next week, but right now. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is God, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. While we're going to the throne of grace right now, right now. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. You see every petition. You see every need. You see every hurt. You see every pain. God, move it right now. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. We call it done. In Jesus' name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We call it done. Those that need a financial blessing, open that door. God, those that are disturbed in their mind, I speak peace in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. He's a miracle-working God. You know, I thought about a little friend of mine in New York. She went with me when I was on television and she was having a problem with one of her arm or, arm or shoulder or something. And I was praying for people uh, on my broadcast and she was standing on her side. And I saw her waving her arm and doing all this. I didn't know what was going on. And she told me after we went out there, she said, while you were praying for them, God healed my body. He's a miracle working God. God designed your body where it would heal itself. You know, we're looking forward to our next broadcast, looking forward to bringing you the word of God. I'm just, I'm just loving God. I'm loving being saved. I'm excited about got this opportunity to give you the word of God. I want you to do something, for, do something for me. Remember, you don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God. Until we come your way again next time, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go with God, and I promise you, God will go with you. Be blessed.